Hey guys, yes, it's true. I have sold the majority of my positions. And I'm gonna show you today the exact reasoning that I had yesterday night to start selling off my positions. If you looked a little bit on the, char on the charts today already, you see that the Bitcoin price is moving to the downside, but there were warning signs that this was going to happen and I'm going to show and explain it to you. And of course, I will also give you an update how low we potentially will go and from where and when we will potentially continue to go to the upside. If you think that is interesting, make sure that you're subscribed to the channel, like this video and also activate the bell so that you will never miss out on these really, really, really important updates. And now let me show you what I found. First of all, what I want to point out is when we're going here on the CME chart for Bitcoin that... I told you guys yesterday that there was a CME gap all the way up here at $37,555. That's where we closed CME. And then we um, were floating around around $37,000 yesterday. So what happened yesterday was that when the CME market opened, when the futures market opened, the price rallied immediately up to the CME gap, closed it and came back down. And I had also mentioned that this is um, a viable scenario that we could see something like this. And now everybody is questioning themselves, will we see from here a bounce back to the upside and continue upwards? There is a slight chance that this is going to happen, but I'm going to show you some evidence in today's episode here that is pointing to something else. What I mean by that is it is pointing to something else that does not mean it has to happen. It is just something that came together with, with a lot of different confluence that told me, okay, there are so many things, so many pieces moving around here, pointing to the same thing, that it is potentially better to be cautious and take some profits here. When we're moving on to the weekly chart, the weekly chart did exactly what I wanted to do. And that was that we closed last week's candle uh, really close to the resistance level where we are at right now. So it would have been a little bit better if we would have closed within that resistance around $37,700, kind of like in the middle of it. We closed just under it. And that's why, in my opinion, we see from a technical perspective right now, that's more retracement to the downside because we are sitting exactly at that resistance above us. And um, yeah, it's resistance. So we uh, have trouble to go through that level to move here in direction of $42,000. Here on the daily chart, uh, the warning signs on the daily chart, they were already there for quite a bit. And that was the stochastic errors I was... Um, giving us here a sell signal already like uh, yesterday or the day before that and that the RSI was already uh, overbought and was forming here a bearish divergence. So here you see price is going up. RSI is not creating a newer higher high while we are going up and then we have a bearish divergence playing out. The bearish divergence is not completely playing out right now yet but it is something to worry about. The bearish divergence will be completely playing out if we are breaking, let's say, uh, if we break here around $35,800. If we are breaking that level, then I would come out and say, okay, the bearish divergence is about to play out. We might go all the way down to like 33, 34, something like this. But for now, it's not the case. The Bitcoin price is still in that, um, bull pennant here. Uh, of course, we have three consecutive red candles, which is not good. And normally when we see something like that, we have either the candle right now or the candle tomorrow making a move um, most of the time to the downside. And it's a severe move to the downside if it's happening. It doesn't have to, but it can. It could also go exactly the other way around. But for now, with everything what I'm seeing, I have to admit that it might be too the downside. Here I'm going to show you now some of the reasons that led to that I sold um, the majority of my open positions that I had. One of them is the open interest down here. So you see we got already a small flush in the open interest. 
to the downside. Uh, there were some shorts liquidated because price was going up. And then now price is going down and the open interest is creeping up here a little bit. So there, But there is the open interest right now is not so crazy on the daily chart. It might be different if we go to four hourly chart. No, also also here, nothing really to see uh, for now. So, but what I want to show you guys with the open interest is here, you have always these buildups where the open interest is climbing, 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 and at some point it falls off a cliff. And then if the price action um, <clears throat> goes in, in the other direction, which it normally does, then you know, okay, that was a short squeeze, that was a long squeeze. So for example, if you have a flush in the open interest like this to the downside here, where the open interest goes almost back to zero. It means all um, leverage positions are liquidated uh, to one side. Uh, you can also have that while the price is going down. Price is going down, open interest goes down at the same time. They know, okay, they were also flushed. So you have that both ways, um, always. So let me just check here something. See here, this is what I mean, you know? So price goes down, open interest flushed to the downside. So it, it works to both sides. You just have to see to which side it most likely leaning. Now, if open interest would build up here to the upside while we are more or less breaking down, and the chances are really high that, that we will actually break down. But there are some other indicators also out there. We have here the exchange um, Bitcoin future open interest in general. And you see here the open interest is climbing overall. And when open interest is climbing, that means more and more people are betting on in that phase of the market that the price is going up. Um, that means there are a lot of long positions out there that might get liquidated. So a market maker will start hunting these positions at some point and will create a really big drop in the market. So in this, when I see something like this rising like this, it starts to concern me. So it's not like that, um, this has to have an effect immediately, but look at the steep run here to the upside. That is really steep to the upside. So in something like this, there I get cautious when I see something like this. Also here, when we are looking at the total futures open interest for all coins, you also see here over the last couple of days, we saw here a dramatic increase to the upside in open interest across um, all future contracts. So here at 1.704 million um, open in future contracts a week ago. So, and that is quite a lot. When we are also looking at the funding rates, the funding rates also, they are painting a really clear picture, but also here I have to say, funding rates can also stay at these levels for weeks and months. We have seen it in the last bull run. Um, but again, with everything as I've just shown you, it is a warning sign for me. And that is that the funding is negative. That means everybody is long and longs are paying for shorts because it's less favorable right now to hold a short when the market is going up. So they get all the fees. That's why the funding is negative. And you see here, it is everything, everything is negative. Also on Binance. Mm, okay, Atom. Atom is positive. So Atom must be dropping so that um, shorts are paying for longs. But otherwise, you see here across the board at all other exchanges, everything is negative. So there will be a big flush be happening at some point to reset this to neutral or actually um, yeah, move that over into positive funding. But when you see something like this, that across the board, everything has negative funding, that means everybody's betting on that the market is going up that is when you have to start to pay attention. And then also here, uh, when we are looking at the Bitcoin funding rates across all exchanges, what you can see here also, green means people are uh, long. And you see here also major area, only green, nothing red. There's nothing red since August 4th, more or less, or September, kind of like that, September. And then you also look here at Bitcoin short liquidations across all exchanges. Barely any shorts are getting liquidated because nobody is short right now. Everybody is long. Nobody wants to be short. So, and when you see some such an imbalance in the market that everybody and their grandmother is long and nobody is short, 
guess what market makers are doing? They want your money, so they just roll it over to the other side, push the price down, liquidate everyone, take all this money that they make from the liquidations and send it back up and rinse and repeat the whole process. So, and this is stuff that you really, really need to know and to pay attention to uh, when you are trading on futures because that will give you an indication what's happening in the market with a lot of confluence. So in here, in that specific scenario, I'm telling you, everything is pointing to that we will get a flush. I, I, I call it a pit stop, a pit stop on, uh, on the way to, um, or continuation to the upside, but we will get that pit stop to the downside. And I'm gonna show you now what targets I'm looking at where we potentially could go to. But if uh, you want to trade with me together, guys, in this volatile market, don't forget, you still get $30,000 if you use here my specific link uh, for a Bybit. Bybit is the exchange that I usually trade on um, or on BitGet. Also there, you still get $30,000 and 20% uh, on your initial deposit, but also only with that specific link here. And the 20% are only tradable. You cannot withdraw them, but the profits that you generate out of the 20%, that is money that you can take off the platform. And also Femex, Femex is also getting popular again. I see it a lot. Uh, also here, a link to my Femex account, especially for people in the US, I will not tell you how you can use um, a platform like Femex, but let me put it this way, they are letting it slide, you know what I mean? So you can trade on Femex as a US citizen if you know, if you know how to do it. Uh, so now let me show you the levels that I'm looking at. For the best levels to look at, we are going here to the four hourly chart. Here on the four hourly chart with the liquidation levels, we can clearly see again where liquidity is sitting. Now the over leveraged long positions down here are the closest to grab to the downside. I would be not surprised to see a flush to like 35,000, what is it, $600. Um, it's like a thousand dollar move to the downside. That's definitely in the cards, uh, in my opinion, right now to see something like this. Then we come back up, liquidate all the longs that are uh, all the shorts that are sitting there, over leverage shorts, and then potentially send it higher here to clean everything up to uh, $42,000, in my opinion. Also, here on this chart, really interesting. So now there is no, um, no way anymore that you can basically continue to draw here that ascending triangle. So we have broken it now to the downside. Uh, we can clearly see that. Also here, the next level of support is in alignment with $35,950 approximately. If I draw here a line like this, uh, that is on the one hourly chart, the first potential, oh no, actually here, this here. So this is around, $36,500 more or less um, is the potential uh, closer support here to the price action where you potentially bounce back to the upside. But I would not be betting on this. Uh, that is not a really strong support. Uh, the next bigger underlying one is either here at uh, 35950 approximately or even below that at uh, $35,200. $35,200 is for me the line in the sand. If we lose that, then I will also close all my remaining positions because if we lose that level after we just flipped it last week, that will be a bearish sign for me. And I think we will also on um, the lower time frames break some lower lows that, that we have from last week. So that will be really, really bad. And uh, that's then really the moment where, I, where I'm closing everything what I, what I have still running. Uh, on the other hand, on the one hourly, we start to look a little bit more bullish already, um, but it can, can still take an hour or two uh, to see here uh, this coming in, into uh, fruition. And that is the stochastic RSI is at the bottom, wants to turn around. The RSI wants, wants to do the same. Only the MACD, the um, trend line and the signal line, they are spreading still too far away from each other. I would like to see the signal line in blue. Uh, also making a turn because the way that it's open right now uh, is a signal that we are not done yet with um, this downwards move. So and also you see that here in a price action, it's continuously moving slow, slowly but surely to the downside. But I think in an hour or two, 
it's going to stop here based on the one hourly chart. And we are, when we are going here again to the, uh, to a four hourly chart, and we are looking here at um, that range that we're trading in. Like I said, in the night, we tried to break the range with that CME gap push. We failed to do so. Now the uh, question is, will we only get to the bottom of that range and see a bounce from there back to the upside or will we break actually lower from here? Again, if I look on a stochastic RSI and on the RSI, stochastic says I, I'm done with selling. Um, maybe the, yeah, just the four hours of that candle um, will be continued selling, which could bring us to the bottom of that range. And then we bounce and continue to go to the upside. Or um, we could get pushed a little bit more sideways and see then actually the real flush happening to the downside to like 35, just slightly under 35 in my opinion, here into that support level of 34,700. So $2,000 to the downside. And from there, see a massive wick coming back up and going up here. Um, back in direction of $40,000. I will potentially, as soon as we are breaking here, I'm going to place limit order longs all the way down there because I believe that this is the most likely area that we will be hitting if we are losing the range that we are trading in right now. Uh, yeah, but yeah, guys, that's uh, basically it for today already. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Be safe there out, uh, out there trading. Um, I hope it's for you not too late to close some positions. I hope you are also heavily in profits with the trades that are provided to you. We're, we're making so much profit uh, the last two weeks. It's insane. I cannot. It's over two years ago that I made so much profit in such a short amount of time. So I really, really um, wish you that you had the same experience. And if not, be careful, set your stop loss. Better, better sorry than having a loss. And I'm going to see you then again tomorrow.